All right, there we are. So I know whoever's watching this at the time is probably not uh, tuning in live Thursday, uh, January 17th at 8.15 p.m. All right, again, my name is Joe Todd, and the reason we're doing these videos is to lead, help, uh, provide information for youth and high school football programs. That's the premise, okay? Uh, we're starting with this series, okay? The name of the series, okay? And just a lot of disclaimers. First of all, I have to assume that you understand some basic football knowledge um, or that you're, you're just going to have to pick up on the language, all right? But, you know, just in terms of um, understanding what we're talking about, series, Right, I, I do want to try to save as much time as possible. But what I figured out last time, they're going to be about an hour. It is what it is. There's no way you can go through one play in complete detail, uh, all 11 guys, even you know, offense or defense or special teams, anything. If you're really getting into it, get into it. You got about an hour um, before you're probably, you know, beating a dead horse. All right, so you know. Whatever, watch a, a video on, on, the, on, the, on the mid zone play. You know, you could go two hours, four hours on just the play because you've got to look at all the different defenses, the different fronts, all the if then statements, etc. So, we're just starting with and talking about the no motion belly series. Okay, so why this series? Why do we want to start here? Why, if we have to pick one series, one play, then in the second play, why, why in this order? Well, to me, this set, all right, so just a little review, all right, <clears throat> personnel, and let's just assume the ball is in the middle of the field, and we're not doing anything, uh, you know, with people, or our athletes based off field spacing or anything like that, all right, balls in the middle of the field, between the uprights, whatever, okay, we have a right-handed quarterback, all right, so we're going to say that, we're a, a run left, throw right, as a base rule, as just a general day one, all right, <clears throat> first meeting, first couple days of practice, where are we starting? We're starting with left tackle being our best offensive lineman, a right guard being our fastest offensive lineman, all right? You know, your left guard is your, your stronger, more powerful guard, still needs to be able to run. Your right tackle is the worst of your five. You know, he's he's still one of your best five linemen on the team, but of you know, that's why it's, he's the fifth best lineman on your team. You should start with the tight end to the right because you're protecting that guy, that player, all right? And you're putting the onus on the left tackle to to, you know, he's got more he has he doesn't have as much help, right? You know, this tackle's got two guys on the outside. And the guy on the inside, he only, you know, it's one less guy for him, not right next to him. All right, it's just basic math right there. You got four blocking or, you know, four players in, in a blocking position, a blocking alignment on the right. You've only got three on the left. So you got one less guy. So he's got to pick up, you know, whatever. There's a, di a different way to say it, but you understand the point. You start with the tight end to the right. Now, and again, I can keep going. There's matchup issues here. Usually this is their rush end. Usually this is their, their lighter defensive end. So they're wasting who they think is their better defense. Now, this isn't a 4-3, you know, but even when you get to all the other fronts, it's basically the same thing. I mean, you know, I mean, maybe their best player is a nose if it's a 3-4, uh, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter what their best player is, but our best players are left tackle, all right? Who are they more likely to put over an open tackle? Every, you know, I guess my point is ultimately people are setting their defenses to, to the tight end. They're putting their Sam linebacker, uh, you know, their Mike linebacker, their strong safety. They're all putting, you know, for all intents and purposes, maybe if the ball's in the hash, there's a different set of rules. They're putting their, their run people into the boundary, all right? Or maybe they're on a blitz and they're going based off where the – whatever, all right? But just generically speaking, right – Generically speaking, people are going to line up to the tight end. So let's put them to our right. We're not running even running there anyway. As a base, right? As a base. You know, there's a lot of percentages that we could go through. 
just just your basic run pass 60 40 but within the run within the run you could be 60 40 left to right okay so if they do start to you know you, you have ways to identify if they're overloading if they're in a four three but the nose is in a two eye there's going to be things that you know you're going to have trap more you know they just opened up trap <clears throat> to the tight end side now all right and now you could do something where not you know minor tangent but i mean this is still the no motion belly series you put the left half back here <clears throat> you still have the iso play the iso sweep which you know the iso sweep is really the next run play in the series they started with the iso but then to me the next play is not the iso sweep it's the next run play but the next actual play to me is this all right and it's not even the naked it's not even the naked because the second place shouldn't be the sweep. The third place should be the sweep, which means the fourth place should be the naked. All right. You know, you could even put trap in there because, you know, if, you, if you've if you got <clears throat> a certain deal or whatever, uh, you know, where you're trying to widen them out. I'm talking about no motion trap out of the, out of the double, the slot wing look. All right. So again, just to jump around. What are we calling this set? You call it whatever you want. Red, blue, you could call it colors. doesn't matter. But from a specific standpoint, you have a slot and you have a wing. So a slot's going to be off the hip of the tackle. A wing is going to be off the, off the hip of a tight end. I do want to point out one error I made on the, on the last video. I had these guys drawn at a different angle. So in terms of their alignment, they should be facing a line of scrimmage. All right? I had them like this. All right? So... Don't, don't take that as, you know, how many more mistakes are in there. Trust me, that's something I caught right away. I just had it drawn wrong, all right? But the, the, the orientation of the backs, all right, of the halfbacks, they should be facing in, they should be looking, they should be able to see the ball, all right, and see the defense, okay? And they're, and they're more here. So on the ISO play, still think you step with the outside foot first, to kind of rip into that B gap, all right? It should look like that, all right? You know, it could be, you know, more like that, depending on what the end does. Again, just a review on the ISO plate, which went about an hour, but like even this little detail I missed was, well, what if the end, and I'm on a tangent here, but I just gotta, I gotta say it. So on the ISO play, you know, what if the end squeezes and spills? And he plays hard down the line. He squeezes the tackle, and he, he wrong arms or spills, takes it on with his outside shoulder. The guard, man, it's, it's really simple. And I, again, I didn't get into it because it's something you'd more see in, in the three down front, you know, either a 5-3 or a 3-5, where the guard is, he'll step back, but in reality, he ends up blocking that way, all right? So he just steps back, kind of lets the end, you know, squeeze inside, then he just turns them, you know, becomes a log, right? Becomes a log block, but he, should, he shouldn't just kind of log around them because he could, he could duck up underneath and just disrupt the whole play, all right? So, I don't know. For me, that's why this is all a very, very long conversation. All right. You know, my whole goal with these videos, for whoever's watching, is these are going to be built over a long period of time. Um, going to maybe go, I don't know. I, I don't want to put out a number because then I have to make sure I hit it. So, but roughly speaking, all right, if I got to throw out a number, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing two to four hours a week. So if, it, if it's one or if it's none or if it's eight, I don't know. But somewhere in there but my point is there's a lot of fine details that if you can get to them can get you extra yards and I think this is a big one you know obviously you've got to be ready all right for this guard to basically step and then just work this way or step and work everything back inside he can become part of that wall all right so just in your training even even on air you'd want to step back you know maybe have a, a 
a scout guy, you know, but even before that, just, just to run the track of, of running vertically, all right, of stepping back and as fast as they can and in a powerful position as they can. You know, that's why that's your power guard is to really take care of anything that's like in the inside half of the B gap or, you know, in, in the B gap and obviously especially on the inside half of the B gap. If he's on the outside half of the B gap and he's going up the field, then you just want to kick him out. All right? Because we're running here anyway. So we're fine with that. But if he, if he happened to be, you know, moving sideways automatically, you should automatically know it's going to end up being a vertical block. If he's moving sideways, even if he's in the, even if he's right at the point of attack and we end up somewhere like this, now the back is taught to do what? Now, first of all, just, you know, this is, so he's already gone, the tackle. Now, the will lie, oh, not the will, but the, the, the halfback who's blocking the will, should, he should be, he should feel this and know that there's a squeeze and spill. You know, you might get a little bit of, he's got to be able to chop his feet quick and then burst right now and, and, and do the same thing. And he has the same rules. So, you know, if you can kind of see it and picture it, it's gonna it's gonna end up looking something like that. If they just if he just keeps it tight and it's there, take it. So it's like, you know, he's just I always just say shot out of a cannon. He just sees a little hole, a little hole, and if he can just burst, you know, if I could draw him, you know, the end of the cannon is like right there. So if he can see it, that little, that, you know, from here, and he can just, you know, hit the, hit the dynamite or whatever it is, you know, and he just got to make the decision and go, you know, I'd use the word, you know, take the plunge. Once you jump, you just got to go. You can't, you know, you got to take the plunge. You know, there's all these terms that you just got to kind of, whether you write them down or whether you just kind of, you know, say them, and I'm just going to use the word I, folklore. I don't know. Is it folklore? What's folklore? Like a kind of a language that's not really written down. There's a, I'm just looking for this cat, by the way. All right. So anyway, so again, I'm always going to say for those that are, why here it is. It's like I just did a magic trick. Um, so for those of you that watch this and are like, All right, I really want to see what, what the, what this guy's talking about, the the, re, the real, um, you know, information. I'm looking for my plug because I don't know if I can pause. Let me see if I can pause because I want to make sure my battery does not die. Okay, I don't think it does. So I'm gonna run and get my charger at some point, but I'm gonna I'm gonna plot it out so it happens quick. Because that would that's not gonna be good for ratings. But anyway. On the ISO play, okay, and I know that the topic of this play is the belly ISO, but that's just, you know, that's just part of which what, what you got to deal with here. All right, again, we're in the basement, editing, not really a thing for me for us right now. It's, we're all in this together. All right, in terms of we're learning football. Okay, don't know where you are, what time it is of the day, doesn't matter. You got something going on where you. You're thinking about football, you're trying to plan something, you're learning something, whatever. Okay, there's good shit here, all right? And we just gotta kinda, you know, whatever, write it down. But you gotta teach something. So whether you're saying shot out of a cannon or take the plunge or whatever, kinda like buzz term you wanna use, all right? You gotta say something. You gotta sell it hard, you know? And I think every place is different just in terms of the kind of, you know, how, how people buy into things and how they kind of, uh, what, you know, how, how crazy you get with certain deals, you know. But again, if this is your, your series one, play one, you need one play to get you three to five yards, whatever it is. This, is, this has to be the one, all right, because of the, because of the people over there, because of the, you know, the conflict of the defense with the tight end over here. All right, you're technically the, as they would see it, running to the weak side, but it's not, right? Um, but that's how they have to look at it, you know. So it puts them in a bind. 
All right, and again, I know I'm kind of, uh, you know, going a lot of, on one topic here, but again, just this whole point of he's, got, you know, the guard's got to be able to do that. You know, and if if, they, if he's way up the field, and the guard, you know, he sees daylight, just run. I mean, that that may happen once every now and then. There might be a three technique in the in the in the B gap. You know, he may be way up the field for some reason, whatever. And, and, and you know, don't really assume that it's going to happen that often. But again, he should know that that's his track, and whatever is on it. He's got to make a fast decision to either kick it out if it's basically, you know, a four-eye or wider. You know, even if it was moving at him, trying to spill it. At some point, we're going to have to kick people out, probably more often than not. We should be trying to kick people out that are trying to spill it. So you're putting them in the position that you feel like the defense should probably be in if they want to stop the play. Which is the squeeze and spill, and then they got to deal with the sweep. All right, you know, that's fine. You know, they they play good perimeter defense and whatever they're going to do to to defend it. Um, so we we should expect, you know, squeeze and spill. Uh, you know, whatever. Um, we could also get something that would look like this. If they're going to exchange responsibilities similar to an option team or whatever, where, hey, maybe on the snap, they already know that no matter what, the will has, you know, the B gap and he's up the field and he has the C gap or whatever it is, whatever they're doing. Because maybe normally they're gonna, they're gonna squeeze and spill and then the will will play uh, the C gap. So wh what I'm saying is, let's say on the snap, he's, you know, he's lined up out here and he's like up the field. If he, if, if he does that, you know, and let's say, you know, maybe the the rover's going to insert right now and, you know, basically the end becomes the force player and the rover, you know, he becomes your C-gap player. All right, whatever it is, he's the B-gap player. If that was the, you know, if that was the case, he'd be playing a little more inside. Whatever it is, my point is you could get him, all right, blocking the will. In a picture like that, and then in you know, let's say because at the as he's rolling down, the will is probably going to be moving over. You know, it's probably going to look something like that. You know, you can get something like that pre-snap, early on in the you know, in the after the ball snap, whatever. Okay, so and again, it's like you know, that's why I'm saying. The time that it takes to really, you, know, you you can't go through all these things and all these scenarios and get to the point where you're you're, you know, you're looking at the play side guard climbing to the wheel backer in less than an hour because we didn't, all right. But that that could happen, all right. And I think again it goes back to just running the tracks, just him just stepping back, letting the tackle clear. And then just getting vertical, powerfully vertical ASAP and just running straight, looking for something that's down the inside half of the, the B gap. All right. Because he knows that, you know, whatever. He basically turns into to the, to the halfback if there's nothing to kick out. All right. We're not just going to chase goats. Although in this picture, you know. No, he'd still he'd still block the will. You know, there's other scenarios where, you know, if it was a, uh, I can't erase the red because they're dry erase. All right, but if you had a different front over here, like a, like a three five. All right, again, I can't erase, but you got a guy here, you got a guy here, and you got a guy right here. Okay, you know, he's going to be down, he's going to be right there. All right, it's just, it's the only way for him to go. You know, the end, he's not there. All right, you can get something that looks like that. He's got to get vertical right now. All right, and then, you know, he would, he would turn out right there. 
All right, so th again, the whole point of the play side guard really has precedence on the inside half of the B gap before the H, all right, or the, you know, the play side half back, the full, back, you know, the blocking back, the lead back. Again, using a lot of different terminology to say the same stuff, but that's why I'm, you know, I make those, I make those disclaimers that this language and all this stuff, you got to take notes. All right, and you got to sort through it and, and and see the similarities and pick up on you know on the rules. Um, whatever. So that's that's the deal. That's the deal. Because that's a ton of time for me. Not that I can't do it. It's just again, it's a ton of time to to you know to do all that. But I think what you do, you just you you know you just go through the scenarios. All right, and you got to work it out. The bottom line is this, to not beat a dead horse. Don't just do this and tell them to kick out automatically because it's not true. Basically is what I'm getting at. For anyone who might be like, no, we're always just going to kick out. It's like, yeah, but n the, this is the point of attack. So if there's nothing near that, you know, we're not just going to chase. Let's, let's just get going, and we'll kick someone out as, as soon as they – you know, again, this would be a situation if you had a guy off the field, all right? You know, and he, he'd be here. Again, you'd have to assume that he's doing this and he's doing this, and he'd just end up doing that, all right? And he, he'd end up doing that. And we would, you know, horizontal slide, vertical burst, or we would just stay on the inside track. Again, I'm always going to repeat, for the people that – Follow along, understand what's going on. We're going through all the all the scenarios that you'd see, you know, on a four three. And I think the the rover rolling into the box, becoming a four four, all right, is something with you know something as crazy as even the end becoming the force player could happen, all right. You know, someone who's who's, who's trying to get creative and make you make a mistake, very similar to defending the option, where you know you'll have an end as the pitch player. You know, they'll put who you think is the pitch player as the quarterback player and the other guy's dive player. All right, whatever it is, they'll switch it up. You could get the same exact situation versus this stuff. So don't make your rules so generic where you're blocking the wrong people. All right? Run the tracks first. So, you know, because it's otherwise you just, you're chasing ghosts. That's, you know, you, that, no, that is another kind of little saying, but. I don't feel like explaining it, but, you know, whatever. You're chasing ghosts. They're not there, all right? You know, it looks like they're there, but there's nothing. They're not. They don't even matter, all right, because they're not near the point of attack. So we don't want to chase people that are not threatening the point of attack. All right, so whatever. That's that. There's a lot more on the belly iso versus the different fronts, all right? But if you can, if you perfect the play from the youngest you know, at the earliest stage possible, you perfect that play, you know, you're going to, you know, gonna open things up elsewhere. You're taking advantage of the right people, you know, and then plays like this are going to be more successful. So let's get in, you know, we're 23 minutes in, and I just kind of made some corrections uh, on, the, on the last, you know, thing we talked about, but whatever. Again, that's why you can hit pause, rewind, like that all right so what this says is play action pass belly iso ohio okay so the way i would do it when you're you know naming things play action pass p-a-p -P, abbreviate make things shorter you got to create your own language again i like the fact that i can say i you know Create whatever language you want. You know, just like there's different dialects in the English language, or there's different languages on the globe. I mean, there's different ways to say the same shit in football, right? Be as organized. You know, I, I'm not pleading ignorance, but I, I do. I don't know any other uh, language than English. You know, I know the basics of Spanish and all the buzzwords, and you know, whatever. French. We, we, whatever, you know, but, um, 
you know, I know the, Eng the English language. That's what I'm familiar with. So whatever your English language is in football language, just use that. Just use that. You don't have to call it anything. It's the principles, all right? It's the principles that, you know, are, are they, they carry on as long as the principles are there. All right, so this play, belly iso, so it looks like belly iso. So we're trying to make it look like the run play that we just said is our top run play. That they're supposed to be over there, like, you know, scared of this fucking play right in their face. It's really these two guys, you know, we're running it, we're trying to get him to do that. If we can get him to do that, and we can get him to, it doesn't matter what he does, we have to assume he's not going to fall for it. We have to assume that that, and again, I do think there's a glare here. Eh, not bad, but there's a there's this there's a player right in here, okay. This is the budget. This is it. We don't have lighting yet, okay. I put a shade right there, so no, well, there he is. You see it, okay? There's a rover right there. I'm like a weatherman now. There's the rover, okay. That's the split end side safety again. Call it like we would look at it. Don't look at their jersey numbers. Know that to, to our split inside, that's the rover. You know, we're talking, that you're playing a, a too high, a too safety team. Maybe they're mixing it up. Maybe they run everything. So that's why you got to know, you know, the, the four looks you're going to get. But most teams, you know, for the most part, they're going to start in one high or two high. That's their base. That's their starting point. We're talking about a team, and that's probably at every level. You know, it's just, it's like picking, you know, I don't know, between two very common things, Chevy and Ford. You got some too high, you know, minded minds, and you've got some one high minded minds. They both swear by it. I mean, some don't, can't even, still don't even know. They just, oh, there's a lot. You so many options on defense to pick from. Um, eh, really, there's less than there is on offense, but still, you got to pick, you know, pick between those four base looks, four, three, four, four, three, four, three, five, but then you got, you know, a five, three, a five, two, six, two, six, one. All right, so you, re you really have four main ones, but within those, you've got eight, all right? Even an odd front, middle field open like this, middle field closed if there's a safety here, two high like this, one high. All right, so again, language bouncing around, but this stuff's important, especially we're talking about play action pass. So we, we you know, this could be the first play of a series, you know, or first and 10 play or the first play of the game, whatever. I mean, they also know it's your top pass play because that's what we're saying. But maybe they don't know that because maybe you, you can, you can balance it out. They don't know that you practice it. I don't know, 60% of the time, but you only run it 20% because you run, you know, f four other pass plays 20 percent so you're you're breaking up your 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 you know your pass distribution you run a little naked you run a little you run the Ohio on both sides you run the naked on both you know maybe you run you know maybe more naked obviously to the right that's the whole point you know a little bit of seam uh you know a little bit of quick game whatever you, you mix it up they don't understand that this is your top play and you could even kind of do the same thing with the ISO. You know, if they're running stats and they know, well, geez, they average eight yards of play on the ISO, even though they're running it the exact same amount of times they run the sweep and the down and everything else. So now you got to get them to do all that work, right? Or they just, you know, watch film and just kind of see it. Not that they're going to measure it. They just can just tell. All right? Um, so... You know, 
the pass play, the second play you're going to really think about and try to really like scheme up. So this play, I don't really want to name drop, but it, it is what it is. It's the truth. So there's a, there's a guy, Chip Kelly, right? The people that know that name, all right, and that, that system, okay? This play, I'm not sure he, he, he called it this. I, I acquired that name from another place. Same play, they called it that. So I just like the name. It's got the O in it, whatever. So that's what it is. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Okay. Some people might call it wise, you know, wide cross. Uh, you know, you could change it up. You could call it Michigan. Doesn't matter. All right. Doesn't matter what you call it. It's the principles of the play. Okay. So these principles, again, came from that system, all right? And if you watch, so like if you go back to watch Oregon film, you, you, you can't even count the number of times the play was run, completed, first down, big plays. You Like, I'm being serious, you almost watch it where it almost like looks like the defense just gave, like, just, you know, gave it up because things are that wide open. Um, whatever, it's a nice deal. It, it, it has a nice progression. It's like I'm trying to sell a car. It's the truth, right? It has a nice progression. It's very easy for the quarterback, I think, sequentially. He turns in this nice manner. You know, very similar to if you do it in the gun, where his eyes are, you know, going in a certain order as, is, as he's making the fake. All right, it's very natural. Um, to me... I say to me, but it, it, in the wing tee, it's, it's the exact same thing, all right? So again, you know, my premise here, we're talking to youth in high school programs, right, that are looking for a system. They're looking for an answer. So what's going to take us from, you know, pick a young grade, whatever, could be third, could be sixth, maybe it's eighth, but it should be like sixth, fifth, all right, whatever up through the 12th, okay? And again, it's a system that allows you to, to do two things just as the spread does. One, use the whole field, 53 yards wide, you know, outside the numbers to outside the numbers. You don't have to throw it out there is the point. You can hand the ball off and get it out there, all right? And even you have really, you know, an extra guy, you know, and you know, not that in college now, you've got some pretty fat, you know, every level. Guys can all run, all run very well. That probably, you know, maybe that's something that that's what football is evolving to is more, you know, more runners. All right, whatever. But at the high school level, youth level, it's not even a question. All right, that these have these guys have to be runners. All right, because they're running like just as much as the athletes. All right, out in space. All right, you know, not all the time, but all. Again, the concept of the sweep plays, the ISO sweep, the down sweep, and then even the buck sweep, all right? Although it's not as likely to get out to the numbers, the buck sweep isn't. It can, all right? Um, but the ISO sweep, or the yeah, ISO sweep and down sweep are designed to go out, all right, to the numbers, all right? So again, just getting back why this set is so huge, because you could run, you can run at both sides with no motion, you can run the ball to these numbers with with down sweep, ball to these numbers with ISO sweep. You still have the ISO, you still have the down. You can run no motion and run trap either way. Just run it. Off of that, you got four verticals. Okay. Again, no motion. And then you got this play, all right, which takes us from using the width of the field, which this play still does, all right, on one side, but it uses the, so I got the ball right now, middle of the field, but you could run it on the same hash into the boundary. You know, I wouldn't say run it on the opposite hash all the way into the field unless you've got a very good quarterback, all right, and a very good receiver, because that's a long, what I'm saying is this, that's a very long throw now. The ball's on the right hash. What we're doing here, so here we go. What we're doing 
We're attacking the deep outside. So let's just say 20 plus yards. Okay, could be a seven route, could be a nine. Okay, so route tree, you haven't even got into it, it's pretty universal. One through nine, you know, hitch, slant, out, curl, deep out, dig, uh, flag, seven route, post, and then the nine. The nine is always going to be that deep outside, whether it's a wheel from the inside, that's a nine, or whether it's just a, a go, a jet, a fade, whatever you want to call it. Wherever you want to line them up, this is where he's going to end up. About five yards from the sideline, 17, 20 yards deep. Okay, so that's 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 the first, the second area is going to be the deep seam, and you know, not really the deep seam, but I mean, you could say the seam's at like 10 yards, you know, because it's on the hash or just that one yard outside the hash area. So it's the seam, all right. Deep seam, seam, whatever, you know, whatever label you want to put on it, it's at about 16 yards. That window right there. That one's at 20 plus. And I would keep that window, you know, no further in than the middle of the numbers. All right. And then no further, uh, 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 you know, closer than two yards to the sideline. You don't want to run out of bounds. Okay. Nothing worse than running this play successfully and then the guy you know and the thing's out of bounds but you had it wide open all right so this window should only be you know whatever it's like you know four yards six yards okay that would be we don't need to get crazy just, just say five yards okay the five yard wide window 20 plus so definitely no shallower than 17 i've had you know if you're on a seven route and we threw this one quick you know so we're going to look something like this and he might just throw it right now all right you know that would be set you know this might be 25 plus okay so you have a window in there that you know you're attacking you have a window here that's 16 could be 18 you know could be 14 so Let's say the middle of the window is at 16, and you know, it's you want it to be about right on the hash, maybe a yard inside, two yards outside. So you know your window there, you know whatever. It's like a four by four window. Again, call whatever you want, whatever. Maybe it's a six by three window. Just four by four is a square. Okay, I mean, well this isn't. This was what five by eight. So whatever some geometry in there but it's important and again that's the whole point there's say spreads you know spread what spread the field all right you know spread the defense horizontally and vertically okay we can't just run the naked as a second play because you know we we're looking for the drag and the you know it's just this one's the way to go because you're saying, you know, we're saying run left, throw right, but even that's not even true because it's really run left, throw left. It just doesn't seem that way to them, okay? Because they're thinking about the naked play. Because remember, we run the naked, saying we like we're all on the same team here, but this is what you need to, you need to think that way, right? That everyone's calling it this, with the same mentality. Hey, we're going to divide our, our passes up so yeah, the naked the naked pass is absolutely, you know, w you know, we're we're great at it. We run it a lot. It's it's dangerous. We can complete it anytime we want. You know, we want the outside route, but we're very happy with the with the drag or the flat, all right, or really anything more than four yards, all right. So anyway, but with this play. We're, we're, it's not that we're going deep, but we have two serious deep threats, okay? Plus, we have a threat, a, a threat flat, a, a flat threat, okay? A flat threat at about three to five yards, okay? So, you know, we're out by the numbers. So this window, you know, 
two to three yards, okay, you know, and maybe whatever, five to seven that way. Again, windows, areas of the field. <clears throat> Huge believer in all your sweep play, or not all the sweep, but in the belly ice, the belly sweeps, okay, not the buck sweep. Talk about aiming points. Although in the buck sweep, once it turns into a perimeter sweep, because you, you got to spill on the front side, and the backside guard sees it, now it becomes a perimeter, get to the numbers, guard, then halfback, all right, okay? And if it's log, log, definitely to the numbers. That, so again, if you understand what I'm saying, and I guess, I don't know, I guess we could put comments. I'm talking to people that are actually watching these videos at this time, so if you're wondering what I'm talking about, put it in a comment, okay? I'm starting to use that language. But um, my point is you're talking about areas on the field, spots on the field. It's not always about the defenders. We'll get to them later. The first thing we're thinking about is where are we defend or where are we going to attack, you know, um, on the field. You know, yes, you could say, well, no, I want to I wanna look at individual players. I want to attack. In That's fine. But you, you'll get to that. You know, but you can't just, surely can't just do that because, you know, they'll, they'll just, you're talking about run plays now. You know, you could do it in the past game with, with you know, doing one-on-one -on -one and, and not sliding to a certain guy's, you know, side, things like that. You know, sliding the other way or, or whatever, but, or maybe you're picking on a specific defender because of the ability level, which again, totally, obviously, that's part of the game. That's it. That's what that's what you're supposed to, you know, we're gonna talk about that at some point. How do I identify defenders and be like, hey, he's not really that good. We gotta, you know, it's almost like it, you know, rather than game planning for a very good defender, you could game plan for a not so good defender because you you know what his weaknesses are and you know you have certain plays that can, you know, uh, take advantage of those weaknesses. Let's go. You know what I mean? So you can absolutely do that. You can do it. All 11 players are, are, are subject to having their film watched, to being graded and, and uh, you know, broken down, like, a lot. And, you know, that's why I always got to remind you guys, you're always on film. It's not just schools watching you or your parents watching you. It's like, oh, the other teams are watching you, the coaches are watching you, the players are watching you. They can see what you're doing. They know what you're supposed to be doing because, you know, there's basic principles. Maybe not everything. Maybe they didn't know who had to pitch an option and they just walked. But, you know, but you can tell. Whatever. All right. My point is, getting back to my point, you got to be able to attack, you know, points of the field regardless. And you say, well, gee, that's their best safety. So what? This doesn't matter. Okay. We got this play. We got them thinking about that play. They know that we got this. Okay, that's you know along with this, which is not a part of this play. Okay, but play side safety. You know, could he be crossing the backside wing? Maybe, but I don't think that's a very good idea for that to be what they're looking at. He should be looking here, maybe here. And, you know, definitely here, maybe here, right? Or maybe here and here. They, you know, they got some way to whatever, look at it, whatever. But he's got to have his eyes here. Otherwise, you know, he's going to get run past. All right? All right, so let's get into it. So so we want to make it look like ISO, okay? The progression, very simple. The number one. All right, the number one guy to the side. So, you know, whether it's X or Y or the Z, because we could be going the other way if we, if we run belly down Ohio. So the Ohio rules are the, the, the widest athlete to, you know, the widest eligible guy to the play side, right? And by the way, I would name these. So you've got Cleveland to the left. So that's easy. And what's the other one? There's an R. Cleveland and, oh, Akron. All right. So you've got two, you know, cities in Ohio, F, uh, L, R, whatever. Figure it out. 
So I would do that with all of uh, with all of everything, really. Just find a thing, then you've got an, a left and a right within that thing, whatever the thing is, you know. Could be a state in two cities. It could be a country in two states. It could be a country in two cities. It could be a company and two products they have. It could be, uh, you know, you know, it could be a, a basketball team with two players on the team with an L and an R in their names, but no L and R because that's a problem. Because then you, you know, don't pick words that have an L and an R, you know, and that just gets confusing. All right, I got to think of an example. But if you understand what I'm saying, you'll understand what I'm saying. It happens a lot. All right. Random city, but like Lamar, Texas. L and R. Don't use Lamar for anything. If you're talking left and right, because you, you know, or if you, you know. <laughs> anyway. Look, the number one is running that deep outside route okay so this is going to be a nine route now if he was way in you know if he was in here now he'd be on a seven route so that's the little details you got to understand if he's running to the outside part of the numbers and you happen to have them lined up for some reason whatever it could be a tight end in here you know whoever the number one is or maybe it's the z but he's in tight he's you know, and you could change this obviously and say, hey, no, we want to have him run a wheel. Okay, fine, run a wheel. All right, but that's where he's running. You know, whether he's going, doing that or whether he's doing that, he, or whether he's doing that, okay, he's running that nine or getting to the nine area. You know, some people might call that a nine. No, that's definitely a seven because that would be the nine. All right, from here. So from here, there's your nine, there's your seven. It doesn't matter. Whoever that number one is, it's just got to get to that spot. So again, rules, all that stuff. Fucking figure it out. Just That's where you got to sit out and go through all the rules. It's like, okay, what are we calling it? How are we getting there? All right. And they just know, hey, I'm the play side number one. I got to get there. Maybe I have two options to get there. If this, you know, hey, if I'm a tight end, and I got a Sam back up on me, I'm not running a nine. I'm gonna run the seven route. But if it's a, a four four and I got a you know a six eye in here, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna run a wheel. I'm not even messing with that guy. You know, maybe they're doing something where he's jamming outside, you know, on the pass rush, whatever. Alright. You know, I'm not even gonna waste my time in there. Run a nine. Or maybe there's some other scenario. Maybe they're playing two man, and then you just feel like that's a better way to run them. You know, they're playing two man. They're gonna practice the seven round a lot. All right. So don't think, well, two man. Yeah, you want to run the seven route. Yeah, but that's what they're practicing. They run. They run seven routes versus you know two man all the time. Don't think just because you got the better route that they're not working that. Are they working nine routes? You know, which for them is a wheel. Which is a double thought because they got to work the three and the and the and the nine, so whatever you understand the point. You meaning the person who's listening, all right? Because I know it's a lot, all right? It's a lot of stuff. You, you can't just get a little, you know, flipping through a book. It's not going to work, all right? You got to really go through all the stuff and put the you know put the time in to talk about it, all right? Really figure it out. All right now. We're here. That's not going to change. You know, drill simple for the quarterback. Reverse pivot, make it look like the ISO. And then as soon as he can, he's snapping his eyes to that high outside spot, identifying who the deep defender is. So if he knows, if he just, we just know. If he knows he's covered two, let's just say he's happen to know. Or very good assumption. Okay, and then if it wasn't cover two, then you'd know it's two man would be your, you just know because you see the corner turning his back. But if it was cover two, and that safety now is the deep halves defender, and he sees that the safety's stuck on the hash, just throw it right now. Just throw it. All right, so that's, so that's number one. All right, right now, that's the first thing you gotta be able to throw. That's the whole idea. So just to stop for a second, you know, we're saying our left tackle is our best run blocker. This play, 
this ability to get the ball from there to there is the, the, the second most important thing that we should because without the ability to throw that eh, you're gonna get a lot of you're gonna get a lot of man to man you're gonna get a lot of nine man fronts this pass you know it it, it, it ensures that the best they can do is what I would say eight and a half meaning they've got the they'll go cover three robber type defense but I would call that guy in the middle that safety the half a defender he's not really a ninth guy and G defense people are probably like oh my god no that's like that's the ninth that's the guy maybe but it, you know but we're, we to me the wing tee has answers for that because we're always putting them in the blocking scheme all right or is accounting for him you know whatever um you know we're not just okay that he's got the quarterback and he's the extra guy and he's the quarterback guy like the kind of this i think the spread principle would be just well that's the court you know that's the quarterback's guy no we're gonna block him with an actual blocker all right um but again it all goes but you gotta be able to throw that that ball and catch it okay it doesn't matter who who it is i mean you got four options right it could be him if you want to basically run smash out here and he runs the hitch or whatever you whatever you want to do okay but these two are running that stack all right we're getting the scene attack from the backside number two all right so the backside number two this is the backside number one this is the backside two Okay, again, could be anybody. If you're running it the other way, if you were running belly down Ohio, okay? Now, you know, he's now gonna run what I would call, I just call this an over route. I don't know. He's getting over the defense. Some people might call it a deep drag or an opposite seam route. Oh, shit. I hope this is still on. It is. I just had the 10% battery thing pop on. I'm gonna get my charger. Sorry. Funny, I can talk to the people who are watching. It might be, it has to be one person. Otherwise it's like the whole tree fall in the forest did it make a sound you wouldn't be hearing this right now if you weren't watching so all right we're plugged in still live 55 minutes 52 minutes all right so over route i don't know whatever you want to call it opposite scene he's getting to the opposite scene okay he's getting to the opposite scene you know, again, do you say deep seam? I don't know. I don't even know if I ever, ever said deep seam. Not to say I just made it up, but I don't know. It's like a, it's like a double. It's, it is the seam it implies, whatever. Deep seam is probably like twenty-five yards. Okay, just to, again to get to lock in. This is the seam. Okay, we'll just call it the seam. That I would lock that in okay this is the deep outside you know if you got a better way to say it go nuts but that's what it is it's the deep outside right and this is you know you could call this the short outside or you know otherwise you're known as the flat so you just call that the flat you know whatever whatever you want to call that so if you look at what we're attacking so that's one, that's two, but it's like, this is like, you know, 1A and 1B. They, 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 they can happen very quick, either one of them, okay? So I was talking about, if you know it's cover two, you just know, you know, whatever. It doesn't, even if it was two man, you still got a shot on that ball because you're reading the same guy right now. And just making sure I can be seen. Look, we're gonna spin out. I'm gonna exact like I already, I, 
I'm gonna spin out again. Obviously, I would have already I'm taken some big steps. I'm going like over here. I'd be out of the camera range. So we're here. We've handed it off. Now we got to get around real quick. But we control that flat route like that. I mean, you know, that's the old double play thing, like in baseball. I mean, it's just a quick. So I know I, when the the ball is here. I got these two spots. I'm looking at that safety as soon as I can, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't break my neck, but as soon as I can get some peripheral vision on that safety, on that deep half defender, it's not so much about the safety, it's about the deep half defender. So again, we're saying it's a safety. See the, two or, see the cover two or two man, okay? We see the safety and he is flying off the hash. We're not throwing that ball, okay? The safe, the half field defender is reading, so, you know, because this is what we're doing with him. He's fast to the flat, the half back, okay? So right now, he's, he's gone. He's expanding to the flat, all right? Not jogging, not that, no one's, you know, coaching guys a jog, but you got, he's got to be fast, right? So he's got to be... I would say fast to the flat. It just sounds, that might be an iambic pentameter. Fast to the flat. Probably not, all right? Fast to the flat. Maybe, whatever. Fast to the flat, fast. You know, because we're trying to outrun. What if he knows it's pass? What if he's the the flat <coughs> the flat defender? Okay, because if if it's cover four, or if it's man, or if it's you know, if they were rolling to cover three, let's say on the flat with him as the middle, you know, third, or Will becoming the flat, maybe they're screwing down that safety. Because they're thinking tight end side run, whatever, right? So so maybe he's the flat defender. Maybe they're a man. Maybe he's his man. So he's got to outrun that guy to the flat. We're attacking the flat. We're not trying to run away from the wheel backer. No. We're running to this as fast as possible. Okay? It isn't like he can say, oh, I'm wide open. Throw me the ball. No. Go. You just got to go there. All right? We got to put him in a bind. We gotta put him in a bind. First of all, you know, he's in a bind because he, he thinks it's run. So that's the first bind. So again, all this can be applied to all the fronts. You know, I, I wish I could go through every front, same exact play, but like that's just that'd be four hours. Okay? To go through all four fronts, maybe not four, because there's a lot, a lot of common stuff that you they would overlap, all right, as you go through the other looks, you have some overlap. But, um, you know, obviously the protections would be a little different. But, you know, too high is too high. You know, you got to deal with the end. His alignment is going to be different, you know, in a 5-2 or a 3-4, you know, 4-3. You know, it's going to be a little different. Maybe they get in a 6-1 type look. A little different. You know, probably, you know, 6-1 to me, that you just, it looks, it's blitz. It's man. It's man. They're getting a six one. It's man. All right. So now you know that. Um, you know, obviously middle field close is different. You know, it's different. You already know the scene's wide open because you know it's the guy from the other side attacking that seam. That's one of the great things about this play. Okay. So just hate this. I feel like it sounds rude. Just listen, but listen. All right, I'm talking to people that are looking for the information that they need to come up with a system, okay? Install a system that's going to take them from a young grade all the way to the end, be very successful, have a lot of, you know, good things happen and things that just fucking make sense, all right? So this makes sense, all right? 
that again we're attacking the areas that are the furthest away. You know, it isn't like we're going in here with the with the with the route. So if you think about it, it's, it's the three furthest spots away from the attack in the play action game. So this point where I'm making is we're taking a guy from the other side. They don't see him coming. If you watch the film, the, you got guys running over the top of a safety or, you know, safety's off the hash, so he's running over the top of that curl, seam curl, curl, seam curl defender right over his head because he, because it looks like run. It looks the same, right? You know, and that's why if you want to get nuts, you could even protect it. That's too many squiggles, all right? You could even protect it like the belly ISO if you want to get, you know, I'll just say it. If you want to get nuts, all right? Some people might think it's nuts, but it's not because, you know, you got it. And you can even work back. You can even, you know, I'm not saying you should do that, but you can. It looks exactly the same, okay? We'll talk about, you know, him, you know, he's going, he's going that way afterwards. And he's going to check for blitz, whatever, okay? And then he's gone the other way, but just in terms of, and I know I'm bouncing around, but the protection part, real simple, you know, real simple. You can man it up and just do your regular, you know, slide protection away. I'm not going to go crazy with the protection because it's the same protection. And I say everyone knows protection. I can get in protection, but I'd rather just do a protection video a, a slide video and it applies to all you know the slide stuff all right so not to not to you know this this uh credit or not put a lot of emphasis on the protection part because obviously that's a huge part of this you got to protect okay so this is just going to be as a base way to do it all right we're sliding away you know this you're going to have some drop back you know, slash PAP protection system because it's kind of the same. It's 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 five step or play action protection. Oftentimes, ends up the same. Although I think you could argue, and I, I kind of am, that you should block the pass the exact same way as you block the run. Why not? If you can, I mean, if you just can't, you can't. If you can't do it, you can't do it. But if you can do it, so here's what you would do. Okay, you gotta make it look like it's the ISO play. You gotta get him to squeeze and spill. You're gonna end up logging him on the pass block. You know, maybe you gotta kinda, he can't attack him, okay? But he just, you know, and then he just, turn, you know, and I think that's where you could use, you know, him. You know, this, this fullback, okay? You know, inside half, outside half, kinda two on one. Okay, if he, if he happened to be up the field, you know, I think he should be thinking about logging that guy because we're expecting him to squeeze and spill. So, you know, hey, let's, let's use it against them in, in their pass rush. We know it's going to slow him down, and then he's going to kind of be out here. And he already, he already has an escape route. We'll talk about this escape route after, but like he's setting up like almost like in the B-gap. You know, he's, he's making the fake behind the guard, then he's got to kind of take another... You know, so if that's behind the guard, you know, he's basically looking and his feet, you know, will be about in the B gap. So, you know, if he happened to be, you know, up the field, again, try to log him. And then you got the halfback or the, you know, fullback inside as that inside help if he needs to recover back inside. Okay, there's a lot of ways you could do that, all right? That would be here, and then he would kind of look back as the extra helper, because you can get two guys on the nose, get the tackle all the way down. Get them all the way down, hard, you know, kind of two-on-one, but his eyes should be, you know, he should just post with his play side hand, but he should be looking to help the backside guard, you know, and then he just stay on it, you know, and then it's, Right there on the back side. It's basically man back here. All right. It's man with maybe some help from the center 
if the tackle does a great job of taking over the nose, okay, which is what you should be working for. But I would, I would recommend that you block it like this, or at least have it in the system to know that, Jesus, if you could, I shouldn't use that name in vain, right? Because I don't know the audience. So I apologize. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. Sorry. Look, if you can do that, at the next thing I'd say, we'd be like, for God's sakes, do it. All right? Do it. And I'm being serious. Like, do it. Don't just pass protect it like regular. They're going to know. So if you're just going to go, no, no, it's a pass. We're going to go like this. All right, that's fine. But they can see it. So he might just tear it right away. He might just, whew, he might just get deep right now to take that thing away. He knows it's coming, you know. Maybe he's, you know, he's playing man. He's like, you know, he's like, you know, two, you know, he's like probably two by, I'm saying the same thing, but he's like one or two yards outside and like seven yards deep. So he'll track that thing to the flat right now. He might complete, it might be three yard game or it could be a pick six. All right. And they're playing off man over here. He might be at seven yards and he's playing out on the snap. So you can't throw it. Because remember, you're, you're. I'm getting back to the protection because they can screw the whole play up if he doesn't think it's run. Okay? If they do a great job with outside leverage, cover four type stuff here where he's taking them to the flat, he's also fast to the flat. Hey, remember, that's their best defender. So he's also fast to the flat to the end zone, right? That could happen. You got your, you know, your corners. He's playing like a yard inside, seven, eight yards deep. And he's like just kind of running the nine route, you know, for the receiver. Knows it's coming. So you can't really throw that one. Remember, you're going to read the outside half defender. Who's the who's the deep outside defender? If it's cover four, you have to say it's the corner. If it's cover three, you got to say it's the corner. If it's, even if it's cover one, right? If it's cover five or two man, you got to say it's the, the safety. If it's cover zero or any pure man obviously it's the corner or that the guy defending that guy well yeah the corner the corner i'm talking about the deep outside hat you know deep outside you know, whatever could be somebody else if they were inverted or whatever but in this picture what you know for the most part again those coverages cover three the corner cover four the corner cover two the safety cover five the safety any other man it's the corner all right, in terms of who is this defender, okay? So they've taken that away basically by alignment, whether they're putting the, the, the safety like 15 yards, five yards inside the hash. I mean, if they did that, you could just, you know, you could just check it to the belly ISO. If you understand what I'm saying, if you're with me, if they're in cover two with the safety 15 deep, four yards outside the hash, he's not involved in the run game run the iso or you say no you know it's it's you know maybe it's because if it's like third and seven probably shouldn't be run. Uh, you know if it's third and seven and you're backed up and it's not four down territory you probably shouldn't run this on third and seven because you kind of they're, they're going to call your bluff and know you're, you're going to run that because that's they might know that you run it if they're good they just might know that's your favorite play or that this play gets you the most first downs or the most yards per attempt, whatever, even though you only run it 20% of the time, if that's, you know, something that makes sense to you, whatever the number is, it's a, you know, you can't run it all the time. The point is when you run it, you gotta, you gotta hit one of these two routes. If you end up with one of those with, with a flat route, great, fine, take it. Because usually if you hit this one, it's gonna turn into 10 because something happened where the flat defender got stuck and now we get the third defender out 20 yards deep. We catch the ball. There's no one out there. It isn't like it's cover two. Because if it's cover two, we probably wouldn't throw that route. We could, you know, and that's, that's their cover two is the one where, hey, you know, you know, safety's off the hash, you know, you know the corner jumps the flat route, you know, and we now we've got to throw this one. Okay? So if you happen to throw that one and it's cover two, it, it, it'd have to be because the corner's like bailing out. And he's, you know, you know, you can throw that one all day. Just know that he's going to get 10. You know, that, those aren't the ones that are going to be 10. 
Okay, those are the ones that are going to be, you know, maybe five. Okay, because the corner's going to jump it as soon as the ball is thrown, or he's going to sink on the nine route as soon as the nine route is thrown. If the safety, the safety happened to be not in like the best uh, position, and we throw, we throw the nine route. So cover two, you know, you'll get the corner. He could be involved in either one of these. If he's not really doing what a good cover corner should be doing, which is turning his back to the sideline and basically running out, playing it like deep to short, knowing if they throw the short, he's going to stick his foot in the ground. And, you know, I hate to use violent terms, but he's going to chop the guy's outside leg off. That's just, you know, not if you're not comfortable talking like that, that's fine. I get it. But, like, mentality-wise, you sh your outside shoulder is just a big saw. And you just got to, you know, chop his outside leg off. If you're the corner, and you got to make that tackle. It's not an easy tackle to make. If he does it aggressively, it's very high percentage tackle. So just from a defensive perspective, you know, you tell your forced defender, they throw the ball in the flat, you chop his outside leg off with, you know, your inside shoulder is the saw. Make, you know, he's got to be fast with it, whatever. All right? Buzz terms, nomenclature, whatever the, you know, um, words terms all right but it's really about the principles okay so my point is you could get that you need to understand that you know hey they could have a good you know cover two corner out there you better be ready that hey if if you know if, if he if he does a good job of you know funneling and exiting on the on the nine route and the safety's off the hash but wait hey because this thing could be like on the i know i said don't throw the ball on the right hash this because that's a far away but hey you will have this so here's, here's what I'll say with that. So let's say this. So let's say the ball is on the right hash, okay? Right hash, and again, it's tough to draw because we don't have the spacing here, but you put the X by the number. So let's say he's on the numbers. So now you have all this space, okay? Now you have all this space between the basically where the halfback is lined up. So basically only like three yards from the ball in so many words look here's the math okay from the numbers to the halfback if the ball was on the right hash let's do it together all right from the hash to this guy all right it's like three yards just call it four okay so it's it's uh it's 13 yards so i mean when i say we're gonna do it together we're gonna do the math together so that's 13. it's 20 from the sideline so to this hash right here, so that's 20, all right? So the total is gonna to be 33 to here, right? From the sideline to this hash, take the four, 29 yards from, 29 yards from this guy to the sideline, okay? Now let's keep going. Now we gotta subtract out this, which is the distance from the sideline, so the middle of the numbers, which is eight yards. So we're looking at 21 yards. Here's my point. You got 21 yards. That's why we did it together. 21 yards. I didn't have that figured out coming into this meeting, right? These why you got. This is why, you know, this is why you gotta be here. All right. Uh, again, we'll go back to this. As time goes on, the quality information maybe it's not up, but it's it's at a different level. All right. It's just at a different level. You don't, you know, you only have so much time. But my point is this, like, you definitely want to talk about this. Here's what I'm saying. There's 21 yards between the halfback and the X. So if we're going to outside release the X and attack that area, attack that deep outside, and they're going to defend it well by, in, in, in cover two, playing cover two, is what we're talking about here, he's going to reroute shuffle his feet turn his back to the sideline to be part of that route or to, to be part of defending that route almost yeah literally he's when you when a defender is is trying to defend he has to become part of the route right he's got to run the route you know he, he's literally like in the shoes of of the offensive player running the route so whatever side note but corner runs the route he does what a good cover two corner is going to do. He'll be ready to break up on the flat route. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But that's 21 yards away. 
That's a long way. So he might catch it. We can't. He can't close all that distance. He can't play that and like where the hash is, or let's say three to four yards like inside the hash. I know we're saying fast to the flat, but we also know here now that that's the flat defender, not the will. Even though we don't expect him to always know that, these are the things you could teach. If you know they're in cover two, the safety here, you can tell, hey, if that safety's way off the hash, expect the ball in the flat, but kind of use up some of this space and sprint away and then once you catch it, rather than you know running out to the flat, just turn and do that. Like you could do something like that. It, you know, again, worst case scenario, you don't. You kind of just do it the the base generic, you know, non like you know situationally schemed up way. Okay, and he just went and he's fast to the flat. Like like you told him, we throw the ball. He just be ready and cover two for that corner. To show up like right now, all right. So that's one thing you want to be aware of. Cover two, you got to be able to hit one of these two, okay? You got to be able to hit one of them too because it's just that's the weakness of that defense. Plus, you're running the ball, all right. You know, so you know, and if they happen to take both of them away, you know, again, if the safety jumps off the hash in the corner, just like some people call this a slice corner. So let's say the corner just on the snap shuffles in right now and it looks he looks to pick six, the three route. Could happen. Okay? They've taken that away. They're not messing around. They are not letting you throw one of those two. That's fine. Okay? This is why ultimately it comes back. All right, well, what's the will linebacker doing? Okay? Because if 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 we're doing what we should be doing. And the run game and play action wise, we see a little bit of this. And if that safety's off the hash, that thing's wide open because it's really the will backer. Now you could say, no, 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 hold on, they're gonna put the mic on that. Well, it's the same idea. Because he should be stepping here. You know, no way would he be able to cover that route. Opposite scene, all right, especially if the ball was on the right hash, like it is here. There's no, I mean, there's just no way realistically that. Maybe the will, if he got a good, you know, because he can peripherally see number two. So that's the only thing I would say is, hey, he saw, once he sees that, you know, now he's just going to get depth, like right now, and get to that hash, get to the seam. Could happen. All right. So, and we'll talk about, so this is obviously one, two, three. Okay. So let's just go through it. You fake. We're spinning right now. We could throw them with the ones there based off, the, based off all the stuff we just talked about. He's going to step right now and throw it. He's throwing, he's, you know, there's a, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go into the, every little detail of throwing that ball, but like you could talk for a long time just about this and throwing that because if we can get that right, all right, that's awesome. Okay, now we're here. Let's say the corner bails. It, and it's more cover four, right? And the, the rover's got the number two. Well, right now, we're throwing that thing uh, fast to the flat, right now. You've got to get it away from the point of attack. That's the whole point. We're getting the ball away from the three points, the three furthest points away from the point of attack. That's what we're doing. So once we know that 1A is taken away, Right now, we're going right to number two. Throw it right now. Throw it right now. And just those two balls, I mean, you, you could just, you know, again, you got a righty. That's the whole assumption. I think it's fine. I think it's great. I think the whole mechanic, I mean, he does have to spin one little more rotation, whereas if he's going the other way, but I, I think it's the same, it's almost the same issue just in terms of how he's setting up. So I, I wouldn't even differentiate between which one's more natural and which one is a little more you know because that's the belly day you know, it's the same idea over here okay you know no different than if you run in the if you run down sweep naked he's gonna run he's gonna run with a 
shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, which is a little different. But you got to be able to go both ways, even though you might be 60-40 one way or the other. All right, so, boom, they took both of these away, let's say. Okay, we got to be able to throw that one. All right, so we're here, we looked, no, no, now we set up, probably took too many steps. Again, that's why you got to, you know, it's going to be no, no, so I probably didn't. The number of steps I just took, you know, again, just going through it. After you fake, it's like one, two, and then it's probably one, two. Again, and throw it. And throw the seam. All right, so it's not a lot of steps after the fake. It's like one, two, no, no, one, two again. You know, obviously the, 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 the feet are moving. If, if that happened to not be there for whatever reason, one of the backers is just all over it. All right, maybe it is cover four, the safety. He plays it, and you know, this is where, you know, why, this is where why you throw the flat route. But let's just say, hey, whatever reason, the will get the jump on it. They sink him into the seam. My point is, what's five and six? Or four, five, and six? This is one, two, three. So the backside number one is going to be in that deep seam on the other side. Just get there. Okay? Not going to go crazy with it, but that's his window. It's like 14 yards. All right? Right there in the seam. Just sit there and wait. Don't move. Sit there and wait. Sit there and wait. The back. He's going to check release. And then he's going to get to the weak side, you know, the back side flat. He's going to kind of slow down and look for the ball once he gets to that kind of midpoint way between the hash and the, the numbers. You know, looking for, because now we're getting the scramble part of it. So we're here to know what to know. Now you can work this where he can spin out, scramble that way, up and under, scramble that way. If he can get out and still stay behind line of scrimmage, great. Look here, no. Look here. No, they're covered. Take it and go. If he can't get out to the right, just go. All right? Just go. Okay. So that's it. You know, there's a lot. You know, obviously, the big part of it, obviously, is this one, two, three. You're bringing the... the, the the guy from the other side, okay, again, we hit on protection a little bit. You could just kind of do the regular deal there. I would figure out a way to log it, use him for inside help. Okay, it's like, you know, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. You know, he should be getting out of there by 3, 1,000. This 1, 2, 3 should be very fast, and it's sequential like a clock. That's why I think it's... Easy, just like one, two, three. He should, he, he, he could, he could be out of there by two, one thousand. I don't know, maybe that's a little aggressive, but definitely by three, one thousand. If, if you're counting, you know, maybe that even be a little long, probably between two and three. So he's out, he's out of there. Okay, we, 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 we play action this side. We, we basically, when I say basically, we flooded this. That's another thing, again, time wise, 83 minutes. The key concept, I kind of said it about bringing the other guy across, but you're flooding one side, but you started in a two by two, right? This isn't rocket science, it's not revolutionary. I'm not making anything up new here. This is, this is just look at it, right? You got two over here, two over here. Now you got three. Two of them at the, at the highest level, we're voiding this area because we're going to attack this area with the, with the back on the play action. You're attacking all four of these spots over here out of a two by two, not a three by one. So you got that. You're doing it to your best. You know, I, I know that you'd say, well, she, he should be the better blocker. You know, that's why you you slide that way with the center, assuming your tackle can slide all the way inside for that first play, you know, that first down lineman to the play side. And your play side guard's got to be good at this. You know, pass protective log block, hoping he gets to the outside, rush, 
and just kind of playing with him and kind of letting him have it because he'd be, you know, basically up high like that at that point. Because, again, we already know that there's an escape clause for this. It's like he's just sitting there all day and there's like this, you know, five and six. No, he's out. Okay, as he's running to the right, try to look for that seam. Don't go too far past it and throw it, you know, against the grain there. But also, he should be working out. Once he kind of sees it's a scramble, now we're just working away, same way that he is. We're working away from all this stuff. Okay? So, you know, it's like we're attacking one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, it's really this whole area that we're attacking. Okay? Because the, the, these are moving away. They're moving away. They don't necessarily, you know, this, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moving window. The window moves. That's a way to look at it. So there's a window. It starts there, and it, it, the window moves away okay, as the quarterback's running. So there's a whole other aspect of the play that, you know, you could rep it. You could drill it. And you can get a ton of yards just off the off the you know the four, the five, and the, the six being the quarterback scramble. Right? You know, any one of these six guys could make something happen on, on the play. You know, the flat, the nine, the over route, you know, the kind of sit in the seam, then work away from the seam at 14 yards. And then the, you know, three to five yard, I'm protecting primarily and then I'm gonna look for a way out and get to that backside flat and I'm gonna slow down once I cross the hash because I'm working away from the hash all right stuff like that you know uh, against too high you know you're looking at certain stuff and you know you got to figure out what, what he's doing obviously whatever we're good with this all right the no motion belly series all right play number two. Okay, ISO is the play number one. This is definitely play number two. We'll come back with the ISO sweep as play number three, and then the ISO sweep naked as, as play number four, even though we could even probably go to the tight end side for number four. Maybe we will. I hate to keep just changing things on the fly, but, you know, because you want to be balanced as you're delivering the stuff. You don't want to go in the sequential order that they think you're going, right, which is, oh, ISO, then sweep, and sweep naked. Don't go in that order. That's the kind of obvious order for them to practice it. That's how they're going to practice it. They're going to practice it like you, they think you're going to run it, you know. Um, so whatever, mix it up. But go with the strengths first, okay. S sweep is next. Then we go, you know, belly down. Get a tight inside run next. Probably trap would be next. You know, obviously at some point, the sweep naked. You got to get that in. All right, good stuff. No motion belly series. Belly iso sweep, belly down sweep. Belly iso sweep naked, belly down sweep naked. They're really plays that um, not a lot of people run them the same way they run buck sweep and waggle. All right, that's, you know, very common. But belly iso sweep, belly iso sweep naked, belly down, belly down sweep, belly down sweep. Oh, Belly down sweep, belly down sweep naked, those four plays, sweeps and nakeds, not that common. Belly down, very common, belly iso, very common, not the sweeps, not the nakeds. Those are really what I'm going to be, you know, injecting into the system. All right, that's enough. We're going on like an hour and a half, but um, that's it.